Okay, so for this tutorial, we're going to use, well, I used these two yarns right here. I will leave links in the description box below for both of these. This one here is Hobby Lobby's Yarn Bee. It is a DK. It's low pill, um, low pilling, and it is 478 yards. You will need two of these for one of the Boleros. They are very affordable though. Um, it requires a 4.5 millimeter hook, but for this project, we will be using the four millimeter hook. And then I used the Elise Cotton Gold for the dragon scales or crocodile scales. And since they're pointy, I kind of call them dragon scales because the alligator scales are more rounded at the bottom. But um, this is also a DK and it's not at all expensive, but where I buy it on Amazon, I'm not really sure who else sells it. I only get it on Amazon. It's only in bulk sales, so I had to buy four of them. But four of them were like $15, so it's really affordable. And it's also a low pill cotton. You can see that type of almost roving cotton. And it requires a two to four millimeter hook, which again is what we will be using for our dragon scales. And I love this color. It's sort of a cotton candy or a pastel like um, unicorn or rainbow, but it doesn't have a color name. It's just color six, seven, eight, five. So and that's how it works up. Like it's just sporadic color. It's not like, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't um, variegate like smoothly. It's kind of sporadic, which is another reason I was excited to use this because I wanted it to look really fun and really kind of wild. It does variegate a little bit, but you can see like here we have some yellow and some yellow, and then here is some like blue with some yellow on it. And so it is kind of sporadic. Like here's, you know, another one that's kind of just like that. See, I like it. Like that one there looks like half and half. It's cool. I like it and I think it's super, 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 super cute. And I love this, this right here is so, soft and I mean it's extremely soft and it's kind of squishy too but yet at the same time thin enough to be easily worn look how flush it sits to the skin thin enough to be easily worn as a garment and I'm super excited that these this one size you saw it on my mannequin and you saw it on me I'm a large my mannequin is a size six so small medium and large for this one this one hook size, this one stitch count, this one pattern. If it doesn't work out that way for you, I would just go ahead and use a measuring tape and just measure yourself, you know, from shoulder to shoulder and make sure that you end in an even number with your chains and then add three. Oops, there we go. No, add four, forgive me, add four, not three, add four. Whatever your chain count needs to be, add four at the end. But give it a try with my tutorial first because again, you saw it on me. I am about 165 pounds. I am five foot five and I'm a large and it fits me just fine. And then you saw it on my mannequin and she's a size six. I believe a size, either a size four or a size six. Either way, that's very small and it fit both of us comfortably. So give it a try. Now let's move on to the pattern. Okay, so for this pattern, generally we're just gonna crochet 80 chains for small, medium, and large. Now, if you need this to be a lot smaller or even bigger, I would just use your measuring tape and measure yourself from shoulder to shoulder and chain that many chains worth of inches. And just be sure that you end on an even number. So, you know, don't chain 57, make it 56 or 58, for example. Um, so, that's how we're going to start this. Our chain count for this is going to be 80 plus five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'll be back when I have 80 and I'll work the plus five with you, okay? Okay, I've crocheted my 80 chains. Now I'm going to add five. We might hear my, my microwave here in a few minutes. One, two, three, four, and five. Now what we're gonna do, this 
um, we're working on the front and back panels. So when you're done making the first one, just repeat all these steps again and make the second panel you're gonna need for your back panel. You're gonna count, I'm gonna work in the back bumps. You feel free to work in the um, side of the chain if you're more comfortable with that, but we're gonna work, count one, two, three, four, five chains back. And in that fifth chain, go ahead and work a double crochet. chain one, skip one chain, and then the next chain over, work a double crochet. And that's the repeat all the way to the end of row one. We're just gonna work a double crochet, chain one, skip one chain, and work one in the next. I like to create a cadence in my head when I'm working. So the cadence for me on this one would be work one, chain one, skip one, work one. <laughs> You know, work one, chain one, skip one, you know, anyways, sorry. Anyways, so that's going to be the repeat. We're just going to work double crochet, chain one, skip one, and work one. There we go. I will come back whenever I have reached the end, and I'll show you how the end will look. Okay, just coming to the end of row one here, and I've already worked a double crochet, chain one. I'm going to skip one work a double crochet, oops, there we go. And that will leave me with two stitches on the end. So I can chain one, skip one, and work a double crochet in the end. Now this will have a two row repeat, although for the most part, both rows will be the same. The difference is gonna be how we start each row and how we end each row. So they're going to be what I'm going to call your chain three row and your chain four row. So we just did what we're basically calling our chain four row. Now we're going to work our chain three row. So we're gonna chain three, turn, and without chaining anything else, just right into the very first chain one space, work a double crochet, like they're side by side with no chain space in between them. Now work a chain one and work a double crochet into every chain one space that you see. Chain one, work double crochet into the chain one space. All the way across, just like that. And you're gonna end precisely how we started, but I'll show you how that will work out. Okay, made it to the end of row two, what we're calling the chain three row. And here's how we're going to end this one. I've already worked double crochet, chain one, Work double crochet in the second to last chain one space, chain one. Now in this last chain space here on the end, we're gonna work double crochet and without chaining one, so that they're sort of side by side, we're gonna count up one, two, and three and work a double crochet in that third chain up, just like that. Now we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four, turn our work, and skipping over all of this that we just worked and into this chain one space right here, we start working our double crochet, chain one, and then double crochet into the next space over, chain one, double crochet into the next space over, chain one, just like that all the way to the end. And I'll show you when we get to the end how we end this one, and this will be our two row repeat. Okay, here we are approaching the end of our four chain row, which is row three so far. Chain one, <clears throat> excuse me. And we're gonna work double crochet in this chain one space here. Now we're gonna chain one and skip over this. And in the top of our chain three, we're gonna work a double crochet. Just like that right there. That is how it should be looking. Now we're gonna chain three, so this is our chain three row. And just like we did before, we're just gonna work a double crochet in the chain one space right next to it without chaining anything at all to separate these two. Just leave them side by side. Then we chain one and we start working our chain one spaces. Skip chain one, not chain one. Yeah, duh, sorry. Chain one, work a double crochet. Now chain one and then work a double crochet in the next chain one space over over and over again, and this is the two row repeat. The next row will be your chain four row where you will 
come to the end and you will you'll chain four and skip over the two double crochet together and in the chain one space you'll start working double crochets chain one you're going to do this until you have a total of 10 of these rows done when you have 10 rows done come back and i'll show you what we're going to do next okay i have finished um four rows so far but i don't need to work all 10 rows to be able to show you how we're going to do the shoulders because um you should end with the chain three row with the two double crochets right next to each other. So that's why I feel like row four is okay for me to get to the showing you how to do the shoulders. This top is so incredibly easy and fast to make. This is a one day project. So your 10th row um, should be the chain three row. So this is the part we're going to work on now. Since I have one top almost made, this is the top I'll be using to finish the project with you. So as you can see, we end with our chain three row at our 10th row with the two do double crochet next to each other. So the part we're going to work on now together are the shoulder portions here. So let's get right into that. So whenever you have reached your 10th row, we'll pretend this is 10 rows. You're going to chain four, one, two, three, and four, turn your work and create 11 squares. Now, if you needed to measure out your top and yours is just a little bit wider than this, then add one or two extra squares. And if you had to go a little smaller, reduce one or two squares, that's okay. There's no exact formula to this. That's why it's so easy. It's such a fun project to work on. So we chain four. And as usual, we're going to skip over the two double crochet here on the end and start working our squares. And we will stop once we have achieved 11 of them. And that's three. I'll be back when I have 11. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Now we do our chain three row, one, two, Three. We're going to work three total rows. You're going to end with your chain four row. So we're going to work our chain three row now, just like we have been doing. And then when you're done, you get to the end, chain four and work a chain four row in the 11 squares and then tie it off. You're done. So I'll be back whenever we get to that point. Okay, there we go. I have my three rows. We started off with our chain four row then our chain three row ended with our chain, chain four row as you can see there. I chained one so that I could tie this off. Cut, done. I would go ahead and just weave in that end right away. Now we're going to turn the work this way and do that all over again. We will join at the top of the chain three here, just like that. Okay, attach our yarn. You can attach your yarn any way you wish. Sorry, I saw a little hair, and so it did, totally distracted me. Okay. There we go. One, two, three, and four. So we're gonna start these with our chain four row. And skipping over the two double crochet, we just go ahead and in that chain one space next to it, start working our squares, just like that for 11 total squares. And we're basically just repeating exactly what we did on the other side. Okay, so go ahead and do that where you're gonna start with your chain four row, then move on to the chain three row, ending with the chain four row, and go ahead and tie it off. Okay, come back when you're done and we will start working on these sleeves. Well, I'm a big fat liar. We can't work on the sleeves until we construct the thing first. <laughs> Sorry about that. So what you're going to want to do, since mine are already put together, I'm just going to show you like this because you don't really need to see it to understand how it works. It's, it's really, really simple. You're just going to take your two halves, bring them together, and you can work a whip stitch or you can use your darning needle and just sew them together on both both shoulders like that. I've already, you know, I've already done it and started working on the sleeve on this side. 
So that's why this is like this. I am, I do apologize, but you guys can figure this out. This is super, super simple, but you're just gonna sew the shoulders together right at the top. There is no front and back yet, so you don't have to worry about which way is the front, which way is the back. Just put them together, shaped like this, with the, the three rows we just finished making. Put your three rows together, boom, like that, and sew them together, and whenever you close it up, you will have your top. Of course, you want your seam to be on the inside. So whenever you are done doing that, come back and we will work on these sleeves. Again, that is bring your two halves together at the three row shoulders that we just, just got done making, okay? Okay, now that we have our two halves, sewn together. The front and back are now sewn together on both shoulders. We have our neck hole here in the middle. Let's go ahead and start the sleeves. So just making sure that the seam is going to be on the inside. Fold the two halves together like this. And we're going to go ahead and, uh-oh, where is my hook? There it is. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and attach our yarn. You just attach your yarn any way you're comfortable with. I like to just attach it loosely and then I just weave it in on the end at the end. So I'll just pull it through my stitch like that. Drop the tail down. And now we're gonna chain four. And if you need this armhole to be a little bit bigger, chain six. But if you need it to be smaller, I would still stick with the chain four so that it's not too uncomfortable under the arm. So one, two, three, and four. Then we grab the other corner. As you can see here, we'll grab the other corner of our sleeve. And making sure that we keep this double crochet needs to have a chain one space next to it. So we're gonna find one, two, three, our third chain down and slip stitch into that, just like that. There we go. Now we're going to chain one and work a double crochet. Sorry, I almost started working up the bottom of the top. That would have been a mistake. So we're gonna do a chain one and here we have our sleeve right here, and in this first chain one space, work a double crochet, or sorry, a single crochet. I suppose if you're in the UK, that's a double crochet. <laughs> now we're gonna chain three because our single crochet is going to count as chain one. The reason we're working a single crochet instead of just slip stitching over is because if we were to slip stitch over, it would have us pretty close to this line, and then our squares would look really awkward and big. Um, it would look different than all the other squares. So when we work a single crochet, we're dead center of that square. We treat the single crochet like a chain one. Now we're gonna chain three, one, two, three. So that counts like our chain four. And this is going to be the one row repeat all the way around, sort of. I'll explain a little more when we get to the end of this first row. So we're going to work a double crochet in the next space over, chain one, work a double crochet in the next space over. Make sure that you are working on the sleeve and not doing what I almost did, which was work down the bottom of the top. Chain one, and here we have two double crochet next to each other. Just treat it like a space. There we go, just like that. Okay, that's what we're gonna do all the way around. Come back when you're ready to cross this chain four space here and I will show you how we're going to work that, okay? Okay, I'm just coming up to my chain four here. So let's finish off these last couple of squares. Put one here in the end. Now we're going to treat this chain four like it is our foundation chain. So we're going to skip the first chain and in the second one over, we're going to work um, a square. Oh, so I guess I need to chain one, sorry. I need to chain one after that last double crochet. Now we're going to skip one and in the second one right here, we work a square in the chain, not around the chain. Then we chain one, 
skip one and in the second one over, we work a square right here. Make sure that looks like it skipped. <laughs> it can be hard to tell with these little chains, but there we go. Now we chain one and we're simply going to one, two, three. Remember to count your, double, your single crochet as a chain one. So one, two, three, that way you have your chain one right here and slip stitch to close this round off. Now, to keep, to keep our seam a little bit undetectable, I mean, pretty close to undetectable, here I have already completed this sleeve, this, you know, all the way, it's all the way done. Now, where is the seam? See there, it's, it's pretty good, isn't it? Where is the seam? I'm not actually asking you, I'm actually asking myself. There we go. Okay, there is our seam. And when we're wearing it, that's how it will look. But this is going to be on the underneath of your arm, not, not super visible. But that is what our seam is going to look like. In order to achieve this and not have a seam that just starts jetting off to the side like that, we want our seam to be straight down the middle. We're going to turn Instead of just working in the round, like straight in the round, we're going to turn every row. And we're going to do this for 35 rows. So I just slip stitched, I chained one, now we turn. And with that chain one right here in our chain one space right next to it, we're going to work our double, cro our, I gotta stop saying that, our single crochet. And you see that puts us right in the middle of that square now we chain three, one, two, three, and we treat this like our starting chain four, and we just start working our double crochet in every square, just like that, with a chain one, of course, in between, as we have been doing. Okay. I'll come back when I get to the end of this row and show you what we're going to do. There we go, so just keep doing that and I will be back. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row two for our sleeve. You can see I've got one square left before we get to our join. I've already chained one. There we go. Double crochet, chain one. Then we count the single crochet as a chain one. One, two, three. That leaves us with one chain for our space. Slip stitch into that chain one and turn our work and we have our chain one so now we're going to just work a single crochet in the next space over that way chain three one two three this all counts as our chain four and just start working your double crochets chain one double crochet in all the squares all the way around again do this for 35 rows now, if you want a shorter, if you want a shorter dragon scale area, then work an extra five rows, and, or you can just keep it the way it is at 35 rows to have this. This one here measures, this measures from tip of scale to base about five inches or 13 centimeters. So there you go. That's what you're going to do. Just turn. Instead of working straight in the round, we're going to chain one and turn at the end of every join. For 35 rows, I would recommend keeping track of your rows just to make life easier for you. I'll be back whenever I have 35 rows and we're going to start working on making these dragon scale section. This is going to be made separately in a flat panel that we're going to sew together and then do a simple whip stitch onto the sleeve. It's very, very easy. Very, very easy. Okay, so finish making your sleeve and then come back and we will work on our dragon scales. Okay, I just wanted to jump on here one more time just to show you guys one more time how we end these rows and then start the next one. So I'm about to work my last square here. There we go. Chain one, counting the single crochet. 
as your as a chain one two and three making sure that we leave one at the top there unworked slip stitch chain one and then turn we have our chain one now we're going to work a single crochet in the next chain one space over here we go one two three chains this all again counts as chain four then we just start again okay I just wanted to jump on and show one more time just to make sure that because I feel like I don't explain things very well <laughs> so I was hoping if I showed one more time it would really lock it in how we're doing this plus we can get a better look at how the seam is coming along it looks like a jumbled mess but it'll come together in the end it'll all look really nice in the end and the the best part is it's not a seam that's veering off to one side that's going to create a candy stripe around your arm of oversized squares without doing it this way our join squares would be about this big because I tried it like this I, I worked on the sleeves the longest to be honest with you to get the sleeves to look right um, this the squares always look like this and they go in a in a di in a diagonal ultimately striping your arm it looked terrible this was the only way I can do it to keep it from having that appearance so there you go and I will show you that seam one more time so you can see what it is we're doing here see it, it looks like it it looks like a jumbled mess at first see that's what we're working on and it does look like kind of an ugly jumbled mess but in the grand scheme of things it looks all right looks pretty good and there it is with it in my arm see what I mean it's not that bad and this is the underneath of the arm it's really not that bad okay so again 35 rows I will be back and we will start working on our um, dragon scales which is gonna be super easy way easier than it looks I promise if you're a beginner challenge yourself with this this is way easier than it looks okay guys I'll be back okay now we're going to start our dragon stitch I know it's a the crocodile stitch but crocodile stitch this one's pointy see the difference between this and your traditional crocodile stitches this one is quite pointy crocodile stitch is a little bit more rounded at the bottom or quite a bit more rounded at the bottom so I'm going with dragon stitch for this one and you can see how the back of it looks and this will give you a better idea of what it is we're doing here we're going to be working five double crochet around what you see these double crochet are right here so essentially this is going to be worked like this in this direction we're going to work some double crochet around the post then we're going to turn it in this direction and work the other five double crochet around the other post so with this one you'll have to get used to working with your work sideways like this or or up and down like this as opposed to traditionally um, but the back of it does give you a pretty good idea of what it is we're working also the back of it is an easy way to count your rows so let's get started. This is one I have already made. So the one I'm gonna show you right now is just our sample. And let's work our slip knot and chain 63 plus one. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'll be back when I have 63 chains and I'll work the plus one with you and then we will go on from there. Okay, I now have my 63 chains. I know it seems kind of long, but it does shrink up a little bit with the kind of stitch we're going to use. Now we chain one, so that's 63 plus one. We turn our work and we're going to work two double crochet into the fifth chain from the hook you can of course again work in the side of the chain if you need to I'm going to work in the back bumps so I'm going to count one two three four and five and I'm going to work two double crochet in that fifth chain it's one and two now we just chain one but we're going to skip two chains one two and in the third one we work two double crochet this is the repeat all the way to the end of row one we chain one 
we skip two chains, one, two, and in the third one, we work two double crochet. Chain one, skip two, and in the third one, work two double crochet. I'll be back when I have reached the end of the row and I will show you how we work the end of the row. Okay, here I've reached the end of row one of our dragon stitches or crocodile stitches. Chain one, skip two, work two more, double crochet into that chain. One and two. Now we chain one, skip one, and just work one double crochet into the last one there. Oh, I think I split my yarn on that one. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you've never worked this stitch pattern before, here's where things get awkward, but after you're completely done with row two, you'll find your groove, you'll find your comfort with it, and it'll be a breeze. So we're going to chain one, turn, for just a moment, because we're not gonna work this way. You're gonna work a single crochet into the very first double crochet, plus a chain one. Now turn back over and put your work going up and down like this, because now we're going to start working backwards along the front of these double crochet here. So we're not gonna work anything around this post, but the first post of our V-stitch here well, sort of V-stitch, I mean, we didn't put a chain, but regardless, okay, the first post of our double crochet here, we're gonna work five double crochet right around that post, just like this. And work your five double crochet, that's one. Two. Three. Four and five. Now on the end of that fifth one, we're gonna work our pico stitch. One, two, three. Now there are two ways to work a pico. A lot of people like to go right back into the very first chain like that, but instead we're going to work into the base of our pico here. So the side of this double crochet right here, we have two bars right there. We're gonna slip into those, pull up our loop and work a slip stitch like that. Now from there, we're going to turn our work. See, we just did this. Now we're gonna turn our work this way and work into the bar of the double crochet that was right next to it. And we're gonna work five double crochet. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we will open up our little leaf this way. Now we're facing the back of our work like this. And the next set of double crochet right next to our leaf, it's, it's leaf, it, it looks like a leaf or dragon scale. Right behind this side of the dragon scale here, you'll see the two double crochet. See that? You're gonna slip stitch right in between those two, just like this. Then you're gonna chain one. And then we turn our work going this way again, up and down like this. And we're not going to work into this um, double crochet group right here. In fact, we're gonna skip every other group. Every other group is only going to anchor down the other side of our scale. That's its only purpose. So skipping this group of double crochet that we slip stitched into and starting in this one, in the very first double crochet, we work around the, um, the post and we work five double crochet. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we work our pico, one, two, three chains, and then come into the base of that pico down there at the bottom, work our slip stitch. Turn our work, and when I say turn our work, I mean I don't mean turn it backwards, I mean this is it's confusing looking. <laughs> there we go. Here is what we've currently 
just made, I mean, upside down, but now we turn our work like this. Sorry about all that fumbling work there. And we work our five double crochet onto the next double crochet post. That's three, four, and five. And like we did before, We've got our scales facing us right now. We turn our scales facing away from us and we work a slip stitch into this group of two double crochet here, right between the two stitches and a chain one. And now the back of our work is facing us currently. Okay. Oh, something vital I should have told you about before. Somewhat vital, at least it's vital for the first few rows until you get a, your eyes adjusted to how this should look. Go ahead and turn this around and let's look at the very first scale we made. We did a single crochet at the start of this, remember? And there it is right there. So look for the little sideways bar because that's going to be our chain one and put a stitch marker right into that single crochet. It's easy for me to find it as I've been messing around with this stitch recently for quite a bit. But if you're new to it, at that double, that single crochet is gonna be really hard to find. And so basically, whenever we come back around this way, we're gonna to have to work into that single crochet. That's why you want to mark it. And this is how it will look on your scale. It will look just like this right here. Flip up and there it is, your single crochet, just like that. Okay, I am very sorry about that. I'm glad I caught that before I moved any further along. All right, we've worked our slip stitch into this uh, double crochet group and we've worked our chain one. Now we turn our work this way. We've got our scales looking like this, going that way. We have our work coming down this way and we just immediately, we skip the double crochets that we slip stitched into. We come down to the next group and we just start working our five double crochet around the post of the first double crochet. That's three, four, and five. Work our pico, one, two, three. Slip stitch into the base of our pico. There we go. Now we turn our work, you see we have our scales, now we're gonna turn our work like this. And we've got the double crochet post on this side. We're going to work our five double crochet into one, two, three, four, and five. Now we turn our work like this to the back and we slip stitch into in between these two double crochet right here. Then we move on to the next group, we turn our work this way again, and we move on to the next group of two double crochet down below. And that's it, that's the repeat all the way across. That's three, four, and five. Work our pico, one, two, and three. Slip stitch, oops. Try that again. And then we turn our work up this way to where our scales are going this way. And we start working our five double crochet into the very next double crochet post over. Two, three, four, and five. Now we turn our scales facing away from us to the back of our work and we slip stitch in between these two double crochet right here. Okay, so repeat this all the way to the end. When you get to the end, I'll show you how we're going to end that off. I sure hope I didn't make that confusing. Oh, I'm gonna feel terrible if I did. Leave me any uh, questions, comments, or concerns in the comment section below if I did, and I'm happy to clarify. Okay, be back when we get to the end of this row. I'm just finishing up my last scale here. I just did my, my five double crochet Work my pico stitch. That's one, two, three. 
There we go. Now work my last five. One, two, three, four, and five. And it probably got a little dark because we're getting storms right now. So I lost a little bit of my sunlight. Let me. Yeah, I opened the blinds up a bit. All right, so that was my last five. Now we have one group of double crochet left. I'm gonna slip stitch into that. Chain one, and then skip one stitch, and in the next chain over, skip one chain, and in the next chain over, work a slip stitch. There we go. Now chain four, one, two, three, four, turn our work, and this is the easy row. And this is the two row repeat. Okay, we've got our V stitch, our, our double crochets anyway, here underneath this side of the scale. And we're gonna work two double crochet in between those two double crochet. One and two, just like that. Now we chain two, one, two, and we work two double crochet into the top of the scale. One, and two, chain two, and we work two double crochet between these two double crochet. This is the repeat all the way across. Chain two, into the top of the scale. Okay, come back whenever you have reached the end, and I'll show you how we finish up this row. So here we are at the end of the row. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this last one up with you. Chain two, and work our two double crochet into the top of that scale. Now we chain one, and we're going to work a double crochet into the top of our single crochet, then we will remark it. Okay, so there, and it's real easy to tell because you've got this line on the side right here, like that. That's an indicator of your, um, your chain one. So work your double crochet into this single crochet right here. If I can, there we go. Just like that. That completes this row. Let's move on to the next one. And we chain one, turn. This time we're gonna mark the single crochet right away. Work your single crochet into the top of your double crochet and chain one again. Now let's go ahead and mark that single crochet. Now, because we need to offset these, see they're not directly on top, they're in between. So you've got two and then you have one in between. We're going to skip the first, well, I'm all tangled up here, okay. We're gonna skip the first group of two double crochet because it's right over the top of the scale. And how we're gonna skip that is we're just simply gonna slip stitch in between these two double crochet right here. Now we chain one again, turn our work, and in the group of two double crochet between the two scales, that's where we're gonna start working our next scale. One, two, three, four, and five. Work our pico, chain three, slip stitch into the base. There we go, then we turn our work. And we start working in this other double crochet right here. There we go. One, two, three, four, and five. We turn our work to the back where we can slip stitch into the group of two, the groups of two double crochet right there. Chain one, turn our work and do it all over again. Just like that. Oops. That was a single crochet. There we go. 
One, two, three, four, and five. Work our pico. One, two, and three. Slip stitch into the base. Turn our work. And start working five double crochet into the very next double crochet over. One, two, three, four, and five. Turn our work to the back of its facing us. Slip stitch right between these two double crochet and chain one. Go ahead and repeat this all the way to the end. When you get to the end, I'll show you how we end it. And essentially, this is going to be your two row repeat with the row of two groups of double crochet being your one row. And then the dragon scales being worked around those two double crochet groups being your row two. We're going to work this for a total of one, and like I said, the back of it is the easiest way to keep up with your row count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So a total of nine rows of the dragon scales or crocodile scales, or some people even like to call them leaves. nine rows of that. So let's finish this row up. I'll show you how we're gonna go ahead and get the next row started, which is just going to be a repeat. And after that, I will leave you to it. Make two of these, obviously, one for each sleeve. And when you come back, when you're done making two, or at least done making one so that you can sew it on and see how that bit works. So at least make one and then come back and we'll go ahead and attach it to the sleeve. Okay, I'm coming to the end of this row here. I've just worked a, a scale and slip stitch. I've got one more scale to make on the very, very end here. So I'm gonna slip or chain one go ahead and work that real quick with you on camera and then we will end this row and start the next that's two three four and five one two three slip stitch turn and one two Oops, three, four, and five. Now we just have this chain here on the end. So we're going to chain one, skip the first chain and go ahead and work a slip stitch into the next one over. That's it. Now we chain four, one, two, three, four. Turn our work to the front. There we go. And we immediately start in the leaf this time, working our two double crochet, chain two, and then into the uh, group of double crochet, we work our two double crochet and chain two. Now into the top of the scale, we work our two double crochet and chain two, and this is the repeat. And this is basically your two row repeat all the way. Just make sure that every other scale row, you offset it. So this time here, when you are get to the end and we have our single crochet marked, so you'll work your double crochet in that, then you'll chain one, turn, work a single crochet, chain one, mark that single crochet. Then you will start making because you'll be between the dragon scales here. So you'll start making your first dragon scale right at the jump, right at the start. Then you'll make, you know, you'll just make the next one here and then the next one here between the scales. It's always gonna be between the scales. And when you get to the end here, you will have, because we're our last scale goes between these two scales, so this one here will only be slip stitched into, and then you end it just how we ended it before. You can rewind if you need to, but that is how we do this. Make sure that you have eight, eight total rows of your scale. So here we have two, okay? So you'll need a total of eight of these. So when you're done making at least one, come back and I'll show you how we 
sew this thing together and then sew it to our sleeve and then you're done. Okay, so let's go ahead and sew the dragon scales, like wrist area together. All done. I love the way it looks in the back. It's kind of unique. So we're going to flip it around to where the right side out is on the inside. And along the edge here, we have our chain fours from every row we worked. Well, we're just going to stitch those together. Make sure that you don't get any of the scales. As you can see, some of the scales kind of stick out a little further at times than the chain four. So just be mindful of that. And I'm going to start at the at the top here. It doesn't matter which side you start because it's all going to get cut and weaved in anyways. And I'm just going to pick up a chain here and pick up any old chain over here I can get my needle into. This doesn't have to be perfect or precise. Just want to make sure that I actually get a corner. I think I'm going to go for that right there. And then I just pull it a little and leave myself plenty of tail to weave in. And instead of whip stitching, I'm just going to go this way. I don't even know what that's called, the serpentine. <laughs> it's kind of what it reminds me of. So yeah, I'm just gonna go back and forth instead of doing the whip. Whip is when you go around a whole bunch like that. I'm just gonna go back and forth. And then I can pull on these two ends to tighten it up a little bit and God dog it. I'm telling you, I'm shedding. I'm shedding me and my dog. And there is no specific way to go about doing this. I'm just gonna pick up any two stitches that seem like they line up, it's okay. Doesn't have to be clean and pretty and perfect. Just has to work. Look at that, my goodness. I've got hairs everywhere. I'm telling you, I have thyroid problems, so I lose a lot of hair all the time. If you watch any of my other videos where I kind of, you know, introduce myself in a lot of ways, I explain a lot of that. So nine times out of 10, when you see me tugging out a hair on my work, it's mine. Sometimes it's my little dogs. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just gonna go back and forth like this along this chain here, picking up chain stitches from both sides. Try to keep it as even as I can and as clean as I can. And there's another hair. It's bad. I just washed my hair and brushed my hair and it's probably like right here. So that would explain why there's a lot. I'm sorry if it grosses you guys out. I'm thoroughly ap apologize. I can't help it. <laughs> okay. So there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's all I'm going to do. All the way to the end. Just like this. There, there we go. It's grabbing that scale. I'm just going to stitch it all the way to the end like that. And when you're done, you flip it around and then we're going to start sewing it to the sleeve. So go ahead and sew your cuff, your dragon scales cuff closed and then come on back and we will go ahead and attach this beautiful thing to our shrug bolero top. Okay, I've just worked my last stitch. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this up and I'll flip it around. And these tails are really easy to hide because you see we have our little um, five double crochet here that created a perfect place for us to hide all of our tails. So I'm just gonna work my way over there like that and then start weaving it through. There we go. And then I'll come up, come up through this one here, little coil looking area, nope. There we go. Then I'll come back up the other way just once and that should lock it in pretty good. I might come back down one more. I just really like to lock my tails in. There we go. That's good and locked in. Okay, give it a nice close cut. There we go. Nice seam. 
flip it around and the scales meet up with each other really, really well. And let's go ahead and might as well go ahead and get this. Here we go. And I've got, well, I'm not gonna use this to sew it on. I'm gonna use what we made the top with to sew this on. But I'll be right back. I'm just gonna sew this tail in real quick. Okay, get me some little bit of yarn here to sew my cuff onto my sleeve. We are almost done. I'll show you how I do that. <clears throat> it's simple, but you also have to play around with it a little because there are going to be more stitches on here than there are on the sleeve. So we just have to kind of fudge it around a little and play with it a little bit. So find my join on the cuff. There's my join. And I wanna match it up to the join. Um, there's my join there. So I'm gonna try to match these two up so that it's all on the underneath of my arm and my wrist, like that. Okay, there is my join on both. And that's how I'm gonna go ahead and join these two together. Now, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna turn this back inside out. There we go, turn my sleeve inside out, sorry. Don't know what I was thinking. <clears throat> Okay, there's my join and my join, and we're gonna join. <laughs> Again, there's gonna be a lot more stitches around the cuff than there are around the sleeve, and I'll show you how we work around that. Okay. So I'm gonna start right here at the join, and at this join, just like that, pull it on through and leave a good amount for weaving in. <clears throat> Sorry, I hate clearing my throat on camera, it's embarrassing. Okay, this I'm likely gonna do a little bit of whip stitching. Well, probably just gonna whip stitch the whole thing. And I'm gonna go through both loops, so we're not doing any kind of front loop or back loop with this. Just gonna go right on through everything. There we go. Give that a tug. Now, because we do have more stitches on the dragon cuff, the dragon scale cuff than we do on the actual sleeve, how we're gonna work that out is, all right, I'm gonna pick up this stitch and this stitch, okay? Now, I'm gonna pick up a fresh dragon stitch and go right back into that um, sleeve stitch I just worked into. So working two whip stitches into one and that will reduce the amount. You always want to grab a fresh of the, the area where you have more stitches of and pack it into the area where you have less stitches. So we just did that one. Moving on down the line and I'll probably do this about every other one and as I get closer to the end of finishing up, you'll get a really good idea of just how many more times you need to do that. And sometimes you need to do it every single stitch right up to the end. You know, like your last 20 or 25 stitches, you can really see, oh, I have so much more of the dragon scale stitches than I do of the sleeve stitches. So you just start packing every single one until it lines up evenly. That's how I did this one. And it worked out really, really well. You can't even tell. So, let's see, I just worked into that one. So pick up a fresh one and put it into this one I just worked into. There we go. And I'll do that until I get close to finishing. And obviously, like I just said, when you get closer to the end, you'll really be able to gauge just how many more times you need to do that. And it worked out perfectly for me. Like the last, I think, nine or eight stitches were perfectly evenly lined up stitch for stitch. And it is going to be hard to figure out, what, you know, on the dragon one where your stitches are. I would just grab, grab anything that you can get your needle into and make it work. You know, it don't have to be perfect. It really don't. We're not looking for perfection here. 
Oops. So, okay, I'm gonna do this all the way to the end and I'll meet you guys at the end and we will check out the reveals, okay? Okay, here is the big reveal. Like I said, you can wear, this is, my mannequin is a size six or a size four, I don't remember exactly, but skinny little girl. And it fits the mannequin extremely well. It fits me pretty darn well too. So there you go. I love it. Let's get a look at those sleeves. Super cute. And you can get your thumbs through those holes if you wanted to wear it around your thumb. There you go. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So give it a try. It's a quick one day project. Doesn't use very much yarn. The yarn that it does use is quite affordable. So why not give her a go? Okay, I love it.